welcome to the Nerd Party. Hello and welcome to another episode of Missing Frames. This is the podcast where we watch all the movies we should have seen by this point in our lives. I'm your host, Sean Eastridge. We're hanging out on the Nerd Party Network, a collection of podcasts dedicated to bringing you all things entertainment from movies to TV to books. Go check it out at thenerdparty.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Join Nerd Party and make sure to like the Instagram and the Facebook page. It's just the Nerd Party. But I am so delighted to welcome back to the show one Carly Cooper after an extended absence. Carly, welcome back. Hey, happy one year anniversary happy since we did the year. last episode, I guess. <laughs> oh no. Are you are you taking this opportunity to call me out on my shameful guest host? No, habits? no, no, no. It was just you had brought up earlier that it was exactly like a year ago that we it's did been Clue. A, well, it's been a year since we did Clue, and then uh oh, I don't you're remember right. when Seven Year Itch was. I think, I think that we was did with- that after. If you can't, if you're going to call me out and you can't even come to the table and bring the specifics of our podcasting friendship to the table, whoa, I don't know whoa, what to whoa. tell you. Coming in I hot. Know. The audience may not know. We have known each other for years. We went to high school together. We're the best of friends. And, yeah. Uh, we're allowed to, we're allowed to rib each other a little yeah. bit. At the, yeah. Allowed at the to top razz of each podcast. other. That's right. That's right. So we did, we did the seven year itch. That was our last episode. Again, if you're a faithful, loyal listener, or if you only listen exclusively to the Carly episodes, which Which I'm sure some of you do. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Carly's the best. So I can't blame you in the slightest. But we were talking about doing this particular film because in the seven year itch, uh, which was so funny, there is a recurring gag about uh, Marilyn Monroe keeps describing uh what's his name is like he's like the creature from the black lagoon yes yes so you and you mentioned you're like actually i think creature from the black lagoon did you say it's your favorite movie or one of your favorites it is one of my all-time favorite movies and a big reason as to why i work in the industry i work in and tell the good people at home who may maybe they're like Carly. I didn't realize she was a person. I didn't. I didn't listen to any of the Carly episodes. Explain to them what exactly do you do and which industry are we referring to? Um. Yeah. So you wouldn't know me because I'm not that important or that big of a deal. So that's cool. If you do know me, even cooler, I guess. Um. No. But so I work in the um, special makeup effects for film and television, and I work at predominantly at a shop called Fractured Effects. And we do a lot of um, suits and bodies and puppet, like animatronic stuff and prosthetics and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Awesome stuff. And you worked on, uh, one of the many, many amazing things this company has worked on is uh, the Westworld television series. And I think the first episode we did together, we had an extensive conversation about the movie Westworld, which was yes. just a bonkers film, but we talked yeah. a lot about all the cool stuff you were doing. So people should go and listen to that, don't you think? Definitely. I definitely think so. And I think even from when you asked me to do that episode and you were like, hey, if we do another one, I'll let you pick a movie. Creature from the Black Lagoon was always like in the list of movies where I'd be like, this one, this one, this one, this one, like these are good ones. Right. And yeah. I've never, I, I mean, I know what this movie is, but I've never actually seen it. And what's funny is, uh, uh, I, I think it was what kind of, you and I had been talking about doing this, but there was a documentary, uh, uh, I think, uh, I'll be gone in the dark, the Michelle McNamara. I feel like I'm pronouncing her name wrong and I'm so sorry. It was such a great, I think it was on HBO, but, um, Patton Oswald's late wife wrote this book about, oh, right. the, uh, about this, this murderer. And in the documentary, uh, they have lots of clips from Creature from the Black Lagoon, and I was actually really struck by how effective they were. And they were used in context with the documentary, but uh, mm-hmm. just the visuals themselves, I was like, this is this looks really amazing, and it looks really creepy, and this is like an old horror film from the 50s and a guy in a rubber suit, but also these shots are so effective, and I think that kind of reignited my interest in watching yeah, there's so film. much cool stuff with this movie. Um, I mean, honestly, like it's one of those films that that so has like affected pop culture so much where um, 
you might not have seen it, but you definitely know the imagery of the creature. Like you've not seen the movie, but you know who the Gill Man is. You know, like you might not know that's his name or whatever, but you know what he looks like. Like you've also maybe seen just like in um, The Seven Year Itch, they go and see that movie and they talk about it. And there's like, there's plenty of references, you know, to this particular monster cryptid you know whatever um there's there's like a ton of stuff so even if you've never seen the film it's almost impossible for you to have not heard of it right exactly and the and again this creature pops up in almost everything so it's it's so ingrained in our culture but do you remember the first time you saw this and did you like it right away like was it literally something where you were like five years old and oh my god i'm gonna be a makeup artist when i grow up this movie has inspired me or what was what's your history with this movie well i wouldn't say i definitely wasn't really young because i didn't get really like exposed to these older movies until i was in high school um and part of that is because like and did we tell the people at home i just want to remind everybody (laughs) that we are high school did we say that or i don't know sorry you know we haven't mentioned that this time we did mention we've known each other for a long time but every other episode we've kind of overly gone into detail about how long we've known each other (laughs) i really wanted to remind people that yes we have known each other since high school because i want them to the audience to subconsciously be like oh well sean must have been the inspiration for carly to watch all these yes. classic films yes i want them to think that you're you yourself are such a monster <laughs> I... <laughs> wait i don't want them to th- wait hold on i thought it was like i'm a i was such a a, a wonderful source of knowledge and uh, oh is that the way we were going that's what i was going for it yeah but you know, okay, no but um, either so like i i have always just loved movies like always i've just I don't know I've always kind of been obsessed with the tv and movies and stuff and my family is not really the same as me on that aspect of things like to the point where like when I was moving my mom thought she would help me by like condensing my dvds and put them all into these freaking sleeves and threw out all the boxes and didn't tell me and I come home yes I was livid but like that's the thing it's like they don't understand that because they don't have that same appreciation so like I wasn't exposed to this through anybody other than like my own interest in literally old movies I love old movies just from the 30s to the 60s or some of my favorite films happen in those times and there's just such a like thing about those films that there's so much artistic just stuff that has to happen because we didn't have the technology of the digital and it there's just right. so you're more just, you're more reliant on your it, it's incredible especially with special effects films and I don't know I know the suit is really impressive in this I don't yes. know to what extent the special effects are but like the the filmmakers have to not to discredit anything that 21st century computer effects have given us but when you watch a film from back in the day like this or 2001 mm-hmm. a space odyssey or anything where it's like how could they possibly have done this without today's technology yeah. you do have to think like it almost feels a little bit more impressive in some ways for sure because like there's tons of old horror movies that are from this era like attack of the 50 foot woman and it's a paper mache hand coming in a window to grab somebody you know like it it doesn't <laughs> hold up you know, the same way that this does, or there's some other movies, like, I think one of them's called Them, and it's about, like, these giant ants that come from outer space or whatever, but you can see all the strings, you know? There's stuff like that (laughs) that doesn't hold up for a viewer today that makes it fun to watch in its own right because of those campy things and because of what they had to do, but this movie, in my opinion, was so ahead of its time because of the suit was like because of the way that they filmed it i mean like this guy is underwater with a suit and they're filming him underwater you know that's not an easy feat i couldn't do that i i have such a like i have such a fear of of water like drowning in general but like i am also super claustrophobic so to imagine somebody in the 50s without like probably the proper protocols or safety measures being put into place like i i i could never do that well and the other thing too is um not a lot of people know this i guess but uh the the creature the gill man was played by two separate men um okay i'm gonna say his name wrong raiku browning 
was the one who um, ended up playing the creature in all of the different versions of this film. But in the original A Creature from the Black Lagoon, he was strictly the underwater suit. And there was another actor, um, oh, I'm going to, I don't remember his name. Uh, I'll, we'll talk about it, I'm sure, later. But sure. Um, he played the on land suit. And there were was two it different. Was ben, ben Chapman? Uh, that sounds right. Okay. I'm on um, Wikipedia. I okay, think yeah, this, that, I think that, that sounds saying. correct. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but so they uh, they had two different suits, and they were also painted different colors, you know, because filming underwater is different than filming on land. And, right. you know, obviously, you know, and the lighting is different. There's no way to get around that because you're lighting through water versus air, you know, like it, it affects that. So there were differences in that. And then one of the things that, like, after – oh, so, like, I started watching – these movies like in high school um when my family got cable and we had the turner classic movie channel so i was just like watching all of these old movies and you know this one was one that came up and i'd heard about it and i hadn't seen it but i just i felt like i loved it it was great because i'm not Mm -hmm. i wasn't really good at watching like horror movies then like now i can watch a horror movie and it's not a big deal but i used to get like really like anxious and freaked out and they just used to scare me me, you know and so watching these like older black and white horror movies they weren't scary to me that like I could watch them and enjoy them and enjoy the story and not be so scared but still have that tension of oh my god what's gonna happen is she gonna be okay you know it just it it made it a little more palatable for me but I also just truly enjoyed it and in watching it you know it's like wow that suit's crazy like how did they do that and I was like researching a little bit of stuff and the fact that um that creature specifically was designed by a woman um and she got a lot of like she didn't get a lot of credit for it in the time and um a woman not getting credit for doing all the work. I that doesn't happen. What I know. And it's 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 kind of sad because like she really is a huge um Millicent Patrick is her name. Um she's like a huge inspiration to a lot of she was the first disney animator like she oh, I, i'm wow. sorry not not the first the first female disney animator mm-hmm. like she she and the other thing is she was really really beautiful too so when this movie was coming out um universal wanted to do a promotional tour with her and they wanted to call it the beauty who created the beast so mm-hmm. but um there was some very negative backlash from um her boss at the time bud westmore and if you know anything about makeup history in hollywood the the westmore family they are makeup royalty like okay did audrey hepburn's makeup you know, like all okay. the star trek movie like just like if you if you want to look into it you can look up you know the westmores it's like if you are born to the westmore family and you're an astronaut you're a disappointment you know what i mean like <laughs> They're just, they're makeup royalty, you know, and they're so well respected. So um, at the time he took full credit for that and she wasn't even credited in the, and in the, in the movie, she wasn't credited. And, but the thing is, is if you look through um, the historical, just behind the scenes stuff, she's drawing the design, she's painting the mask, she's like doing all of this stuff. And she didn't get to take credit for it. Because like one man, his ego was hurt over the fact that this woman was getting more notice because she was beautiful, you know, and she ended up getting fired, and blacklisted for a little while. And like, there's just all this drama that went on behind that. And now it's kind of been set right. And she's been given more credit. But what's a little bit frustrating is if you like, look into what maybe um the westmores have to say about it if you look into that into bud's history it it still doesn't credit her fully and he still may be claiming or that they're still claiming more ownership over that character and one of the things specifically it says about his contributions is that he attached goggles into the eyes of the suit but Mm -hmm. riku specifically didn't want goggles in his suit because there was no way for him to be able to take like to take them off if water got in there so it was easier for him to perform without goggles so like it's just frustrating 
that even today when stuff's been proven that like this woman was responsible like they're still not willing to like fully put that right yeah Yeah. that's awful that's so interesting though see this is why i bring you you bring all the facts like you know what's up with this world well it's just it's one of those things of being a female in this industry i don't want to say like that everyone's like that because it's not like that but you know she's like um somebody who paved the way so i think it's just such a disservice to discredit this woman for what an impact she's had on the horror genre you know like and it wasn't even just that like she's created all kinds of stuff that are like iconic things and she was a much bigger deal than she was ever allowed to be because it was the 50s and she had absolutely no recourse yeah well that's incredible i mean that's really cool knowing going into it and i look forward to actually like researching all of this and learning yeah more for about real look story. up if um anybody out there is interested in that look up millicent patrick um anything just just i mean she's a fascinating story she has a fascinating career the fact that she was the first female animator at disney was a big deal you know the fact that they wanted to do all these promotional tours with her you know was a big deal and and part of it, of course, is because she was stunning. She's very, very beautiful, which a lot of people were, you know, like, oh, like, you would have thought she was one of the actresses or some talent mm-hmm. or whatever. But she was, you know, one of the creators of all these big ideas. And it's just sad that in her time, she didn't get the full credit she deserved. And I feel like the the creature world would look so different if she didn't have that taken away from her, if she was yeah, allowed to I mean- continue. I mean, the look is so iconic and it even, I mean, it still looks great. I know in some ways it's like, oh yeah, clearly this is a guy in a suit, but the design of it is so effective. The design of it is amazing. And the original design was supposed to be a more feminine, like eel-like slendery creature. Um, But it just, you know, for whatever reason, they ended up going with this. And, and what I like about the creature from the Black Lagoons version of the Gill Man, the original Gill Man. Like, that's my favorite. When you go into, like, um, the second movie or the Revenge of or Return of or whatever, you know, all those oh, that's extra There's ones. sequels to this. I guess there yeah. would be. I don't know why I wouldn't think that. Yeah, They, they change the look a little bit. Um, and I think maybe that's to claim more ownership over the design. Um, and, oh, but so crappy. I don't, they're not as good. And the last one is by far the worst. <laughs> <laughs> so don't watch those is what you're saying. Well, the thing is, is I haven't actually seen those, but I'm just speaking specifically Uh-oh. about the character It's a design. trilogy watch on yeah. missing frames. Yeah. yeah. No, but we'll, I, I with, just. We'll stick with this one. We'll stick with this one because this one's great. And then um, I'm excited for you to watch it. And uh, recently, well, a few years ago, uh, for Monster Palooza out here in Los Angeles, they have this big um, monster convention, and it was the 60th anniversary of the creature from the Black Lagoon. So I went to that one, and I got to meet Julie Adams, who is the lead. Um, oh, and she, how cool! She was super nice, and I also got to meet Riku or Raiku or however you want to, um, however his name is pronounced. And they both signed. I have. Um, pictures of so they had like a black and white you know photos of stills from the movie and I asked um Julie if she would pick out her favorite and I'll send you a picture and you can like post it with the stuff or whatever yeah 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 yeah. oh I would love to do that I just want to see them I don't want to show anybody at home I just want to (laughs) selfishly enjoy these moments yeah for sure myself but yeah. so I asked her to pick out her favorite and she was like, oh, okay. And she picked out this great one where she looks stunning and the creature's there. And she wrote to Carly, stay out of dark waters, all the best. <laughs> and like, she was really, really sweet. And I was so excited to meet her and I was talking to her for a second. And the person who was kind of in charge of the table was like, here, give me that. I'm going to put it in this sleeve. And she's like, no, 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 no. I don't want the signature to smudge. Don't don't rush my fans. And like she was like, she was being so sweet. But the other thing is, is because she was like 80 something, almost like 90 at the time, I think. People didn't really recognize her. She just died just a couple years ago. Yeah, she did. She did. So I'm really glad that I got to meet her. But people didn't necessarily know that that's who it was. Um, And I don't think as many people who know the creature from the Black Lagoon have actually seen that film still, you know, like, so, so. She didn't have like a huge crowd, which I was kind of surprised by because I was like, it's the 60th anniversary. Why don't people care? So she was really sweet and I got to talk to her for a minute and I really appreciated that. 
But then um, the other guy, when I asked him to pick out his favorite photo, and he was just like, whatever, I'll take this one. And, like, didn't (laughs) say anything nice on it. He just signed his name and was like, here you go. And I was like, all right, cool. I was like, I appreciated you. Thanks, man. Like, you know, and it was fine because I'm sure he would do those. He hasn't passed away yet. He's still alive. But This um, This is the guy who played the creature. This is the uh yeah the the one the who did the, the underwater one the uh Ben right. Chapman was not there and you know what's interesting I'm looking so this is a uh, so it's it, you said it was Ben Chapman no it was Raiku Browning Raiku Browning so what's interesting about him that I didn't realize I just looked him up and he directed the underwater scenes in Thunderball the James yeah. Bond film and that's that's insane that's so mm-hmm. funny no it's really cool if you like actually look into this movie and pick apart the different people that are involved or the different departments and stuff there's a lot of really talented people that have worked on you know tons of other projects and you know are maybe involved in our lives still today in ways that we don't necessarily realize like you know yeah. like that so I'm gonna yeah. try to guess what it's about real quick Let okay me see yeah if I let's, can... let's hear it I... Well, I don't know anything. I mean, I know that. Okay, well, what uh, do you know? What do you know, first off? I I, I know there's a creature. I know mm-hmm. there's a black lagoon. Mm-hmm. I know basically this woman goes swimming and the creature kind of swims after her underwater and kind of mimics her movements and stuff like that. That's the footage Because you've seen, seen, okay. I, I, I've seen like some of the underwater stuff. I haven't seen how they interact with each other. I assume at one point he like carries her out of the water. Like she like is like, oh my gosh. And he carries her out of the water. Um, I assume there's like a handsome heroic man who's like the creatures. It's like a, a, maybe like a little bit of a King Kong thing where it's like, we got to put down that creature because the, the woman I love is being taken away by the creature. And maybe the creature like, like King Kong is in love with her. Like he's like, no, I love her. And I just want somebody to love me. Um, maybe she understands, like, maybe she's like, no, don't kill him. But then they kill him because he's a monster and that kind of thing so i think maybe like those you know beauty and the beast when you say that i think of stuff like i mean well the movie beauty and the beast but also like king kong and that whole story of like oh the monster's not really a monster he's just misunderstood so i think there might be a little bit of that in this movie but i i other than that i don't really know what i'm in for here Okay, well, good. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not gonna say if you're right or wrong about any. Yeah, you of better that. not. Um, one of the things that we can talk about is uh, an idea for a movie from the creatures' perspective of the ongoings. Oh. <laughs> can we? And I, I even without knowing what the movie is about, I feel like Guillermo del Toro should be the one to to write and direct it. Why? Because of feel- the Shape of Water. Well, no, because I feel like, I mean, I'm, I mean, obviously this film has influence on Del Toro, but he has such a love for monsters. And yeah. I think he actually, I think I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he did an interview where he talks about watching this movie as a kid and how he was rooting for the creature from the Black Lagoon, not like as like, mo- like, oh, I'm a terrible, malicious person. I want this monster to kill everybody, but as a like, no, like. I love him. I don't know if that was yeah. this movie or something similar. It but, like, wouldn't I know surprise he, me if it were this yeah. film. He just loves, he's the type of person who like, if you're like, okay, we're going to make a Beauty and the Beast type movie, he would be like, I don't want scenes with the beauty. I want more scenes with the beast and like, sure. let's understand. Let's understand is, him so. and his plight and, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe so, get to also, know the man uh, behind the gills. Yeah. And also, I just hope Guillermo del Toro is listening to this and is like, I will come on the podcast and I will tell you what my black, my creature of the Black Lagoon movie oh, he, will be. Oh, he um, definitely listens to your he's podcast. He's a regular listener, yeah. for sure. For yeah. sure. All the Oscar winning filmmakers listen to this. This is how they get their, this is how they figure out, like, oh, that's why I enjoy that movie so much. Yeah. They yeah. Because you've really got your album. finger on the heartbeat, on the, pulse on the of, lifeline. Of, of, that's 100 percent, and i'm sure when when we come back to discuss this i will blow your mind and the world's mind with all the all my brilliance all my oh, brilliant thoughts about this undoubtedly <laughs> so uh let's do this let's go watch the movie and we will be back to discuss it stay tuned Now available to own on video cassette. All right, we're back. Um, Carly, this movie was so much fun. It is it's a right? goofy movie, but it's genuinely like suspenseful at points. And I started to think to my I'm like, oh my God, Steven Spielberg totally robbed all these underwater shots mm-hmm. from this movie for Jaws and Oh yeah, uh, and even the music. 
the music and all that stuff. So it's like, you can clearly see the influence on yes. the genre. The suit is amazing. I was completely wrong. I thought this was going to be like, maybe I was thinking too much about the shape of water and what mm-hmm. Guillermo del Toro would have turned this movie into. But right. uh, I, uh, I really, I really enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed the, this is not that different as far as, um, a lot of movies from this era that focus on monsters like you can find this in like Godzilla movies or any big monster movies where it's like oh I don't really care about these people but that monster anytime he's on screen uh I'm I'm all up for it you just want to yeah you want to know more about him and one of the things that I really love about this movie is the very first line like it's the when you first start watching it it's almost like a um a science movie like it's yes. informative <laughs> in like the, the beginning your teacher god just rolled created. in this yeah but he said in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth and then it goes on and then later and later and then it's like and then all of the animals started to crawl out of the sea so it's got this funny like religious thing to it but clearly i was they're all so- about evolution I was like, oh, it's that easy. There's such a division between like, oh, do you believe in God? Do you believe in evolution? And this movie is like, hey, we can believe in everything. Why not? <laughs> yeah. It's Very both. subversive. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I absolutely loved that. And I don't know. It's That's just kind of a, a funny thing that I, I don't think I ever really like noticed too much before about that because even when we watched the seven year itch in the beginning like all yes. of these old movies start That's at the right. beginning of time because they've <laughs> got to give you the context <laughs> like, oh my god it doesn't right. start I where didn't it even starts remember it that. starts in the creation of earth <laughs> like, it's we we have to just remind you like this is yeah. where we came from it's like okay yes. thank you thank yeah. you monster movie i appreciate it yeah but it's yeah it's a very like it is, you have to kind of put aside, I, maybe this is preaching to the choir, but like, you have to put aside the fact that, yes, it was made in the early 50s. Yes, it's black and white. And yes, it's a little hokey. Uh, we've come to the point where in the 21st century, scary movies and monster movies are elegant. They're genuinely terrifying. And so obviously, yes, this movie is dated and it's cheesy. But I'll I'll be honest with you. I think, I think the stuff that is goofy is when the the monsters on the land like when he's like walking around like oh Fra- yeah i mean cuz he's got this kind of frankenstein like yes. zombie walk and the him, suit the suit looks great we'll talk all about yeah. the suit and all the stuff with Millicent Patrick and all that stuff but like the suit looks great so i'll be clear about that it's just the goofiness of like oh it's a guy in a suit however right. the the underwater stuff was like oh, genuinely creepy. beautiful yes it's beautiful it, it's it so looks cool amazing and- to imagine how they filmed that at the time, considering that these people are fully like submerged underwater and you see them like their full forms. So it's not like there's a camera trick where there's a hose somewhere tucked away where they can breathe. So it's like it's dangerous to get these shots. The actors, you know, were yeah. having to be given oxygen to stay under you know so they didn't have to come back up all the time and and wasn't so like, uh wasn't what's his name the guy who uh riku i guess R- rico riku browning? Bry- browning he yeah. had to he couldn't have a tank because the director was no. like no we're gonna see the air bubbles we have to believe yes. the creatures breathing underwater so he would go for like four minutes at a time without yeah any, and there like, was a diver down there too if he needed air that they could come give him some air so he could take a breath so they didn't have to fully reset right that's terrible. yeah so there's like all kinds of great stuff like that but okay so one of the things i want to talk about is mm. um when you watched this movie i, I like I watched Were you this a- at my house? Were you watching? <laughs> no, but when when you watch this movie, like I watched it with the perspective of like I'm totally empathizing with this creature. So in every single scene that you see him in, I have like a justification for his behavior if it is at all <laughs> somewhat considered violent or angry. Because if you look at it that way, there are genuine moments where he's trying to be nice 
And they're just shooting at him and hitting him and being mean to him. they're, like, screaming at him and, like, terrified. And he's just like, what the hell, guys? The first time you see any sign of him is after um, they find that hand in the rock. Which, I'm sorry, who excavates fossils like that? Like, he just (laughs) crank and ripped it out. Like, you don't do that. That's the way the professionals did it in the 1950s. They were just like, here you go. In my mind, the gill man is at some maybe like like a holy uh, temple or something yes, like a, a yeah, shrine that could be, to his. That people. could be his grandparent. Yeah, you know, like you don't know. So these people just came and ripped off an arm of right, either. They're grave some, robbers. They're grave yes. robbers. Yes. So he's just so when you see him next and he shows up in the campsite, he might be like walking into the tent to be like, "Hey guys, give me that back." You That's know? It. Yeah, he's like, please. But they just immediately choose violence and throw things at Typical. him Typical because humans. he's different, you know? Yeah. Because no, that's, he's that's different. True. And, and also, he the way that he kills people, it's like he just grabs their faces. Yeah, he just has to hug them. Yeah, he's just like, stop, stop, stop. Like, that's yeah, what he's he doing. Know, and I think he's too strong. He doesn't and he's understand. Like, oh. Yeah, he doesn't understand, like, the logistics of hugging. And no, uh, he because just... I don't think he's ever been held, you yeah, know, and that's all he's I think that's what he's expressing in that he's just yeah. like, please teach me. But then, you know, it just gets a little carried away. And yeah, and, and I love like when you're meeting all of these characters, um, like how you meet um, Kay and like uh, how she's like showing how, uh, oh, uh, David's down, you know, under let me jingle on this thing and he'll come up and right. she's explaining about all the science stuff and oh okay cool and then um captain lucas the popeye this, by captain the way when she the talks boat. about when she talks about like oh he's decompressing like he needs to come up slowly does that ever play a part in the movie again is that the they only time that's ever up about how they came up too quickly okay. and then when um uh later on when mark you know, uh, well, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but I think part of his issue was he was also, um, being, you know, passed out and then raised up to the, up too quickly Mm -hmm. from the depths below. So that probably contributed a little bit to his demise. That's true. That's very true. So no, I, I, uh, like I said, the characters in these in these kinds of movies, this is not a fault of this movie. There are movies that do it better. Um, I did mention uh, the original Godzilla, I think, does a better job of human characters in these movies are not typically the the reason you go to see them. No, Godzilla does no. a slightly better job of making it a little bit more connected. King Kong, maybe, even though that is kind of the same. I got some King Kong vibes from this just in terms of like, we're going to go to this mysterious place to find this thing that we want to bring back with us. Um, mm-hmm. But the characters in this, it's like there's... The scientist who wants to learn about it. Yes. There's the scientist who wants to bl- shoot the thing. Like, Mark, just, yeah. Yeah, he's Mark. The, he's the, like, the cocky bad boy scientist. Yeah, he's like, I just want to shoot it. And then and then Kay, she is, is she dating David? She's dating David, but they explain that she, she was. She used to um, be with she Mark? Was Mark. No, no, no. She was never dating Mark. Okay. Mark was her, um, like, her tutor. So she was oh. going to school and was like a research assistant. Oh. And they even say that, you know, he's even taking credit for your research, Kay. Like, he wouldn't be, have some of the work if that he has now if it wasn't for your findings for what oh you how interesting there's a parallel there with millicent i think and right and so then they also later on there's a point where um where david is getting annoyed with mark and she's like please try to understand and she's trying to calm david down and she's you know saying like well he's been like this and so obviously david has like come along and joined on whatever science thing and she had been working with mark for however long so maybe there's some jealousy there like they never really get into that but you no. see <laughs> no. Kay and david kissing and mark is really bothered by that and he's like like oh. and then he's even like oh aren't you aren't you worried about me too you know like and he gets he gets very jealous yeah well that's it there's some like there's semi attempts at like oh is there a love triangle here is there mm-hmm. melodrama but it really your description of it honestly is more interesting <laughs> than what it no, is no but in the, the thing movie. is okay so let me let me point this out for you so firstly 
that happens, you know, and then the 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 tent, and then he ends up killing those two guys. Yes, yes. Then he sees them come into his his land again, and they're you know they they take a plant. They've been swimming around. They're you know take some rocks. That oh let me take this plant. They see him take the plant. And then, or he sees them take the plant, they swim back, and David gives that little leafy thing to Kay, and she's like, oh, and the whole time. <laughs> That's right. He's like, creature, I got this for it, you. And she says, yes. oh, it's very pretty. And I was like, yeah, it, is it? It's clearly what? a plastic plant. <laughs> <laughs> but so then, so then, um, oh, and also while they're swimming underwater, I couldn't, the amount of awkward just down Main Street shots of their crotches. <laughs> Like that just got me, and I was like laughing about that. And it's I, the the fact that they filmed all of this underwater is amazing, anyway. So well, you know, I I it was just I think it's amazing at all that these people are like. Let's yeah, the Black Lagoon. That sounds like a nice place. There's one point where somebody says, "Oh yes, the Black Lagoon. It's a paradise." And it's like the Black Lagoon doesn't That's sound. What- that sounds yeah, Captain like Captain Lucas says that, and he's like, "Well, it sounds like paradise, but no one knows because no one's ever come back." It sounds yes. <laughs> it's like wait, yeah. Why is... Nobody ever comes back from there, and Mark goes, "We will." <laughs> Mark's so he's so headstrong. Yeah, what a cocky so, dude! So they bring all this stuff back up, and the whole time the creature's like watching them through the water, and he sees Kay. Oh, and also, yeah, the first when they notice that those two guys are dead, and Kay standing off by herself. Firstly, she is mm. wearing shorts that are way too short for an explorer in I a agree. tropic area like that the amount of bugs and you know you don't know what yeah. she's got great legs so i get it but, i think yeah 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 i think we know what's um, going on here and then later on she's in more work appropriate outfits it's like why wasn't she in explorer outfits the whole time but you know she so- k k has an interesting vibe about her and that she doesn't quite dress for the occasion and also i don't and i don't mean to interrupt this is just a random thought i had yeah. but like i look if i'm swimming in a in a lagoon called the black lagoon (laughs) with the full knowledge of a monster being somewhere in this water i am the type of like look i i can freak myself out in a swimming pool like in the middle of the night and i can be like oh my gosh do you think there's like a monster in here i like my friends and i used to freak each other out all the time like do you think there's a monster in this swimming pool like a shark is gonna and we would just freak each other out you can do that so it's like if I'm swimming in a lake in the in nope. the middle of a, a jungle Hard pass. and <laughs> and I feel something brush Mm-mm. up against me, Mm-mm. my instinct is I am out of here. Kay's instinct with her, like I'm gonna wear my booty shorts while hanging out in the in the yeah. jungle, um, is huh, something brushed against me. Let me go underwater and find out and what look, it is. Let's look around down here. Let's After look around. the captain has told her that there are nine foot catfish swimming around. <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> I'm like, Kay, get out of the water. Put some she clothes have, on. I, you couldn't have paid me enough money to jump into that water. No. So, let, so I, I just want to say Kay is maybe not the best uh, role model for young explorers like don't dress like yeah. hey don't don't dive in the water to find like oh something with with sharp nails tried maybe, to grab me maybe use the buddy system you use know the buddy system. Just like think about just it. that would be cool yeah. maybe also let everyone know that that's what you're doing because you're like no i'll stay up here everyone's gone <laughs> splash <laughs> like, <laughs> but so so i think he sees her like like this plant and then they all go down, you know, to work on their rocks and get their samples and stuff, which right. I don't know what technology they're using, but that, like, carbon dating was fast. It was they great. They got those results real quick. But, um, so she jumps in the water, and he's, like, already taken notice of her because before when they discovered those two guys are dead and she's standing off by herself, he kind of starts to reach his hand out. Mm-hmm. And my whole interpretation of that is he's just like, oh... Uh, how do I say hello to this yes. lady? Yeah. Let me let me not scare her too badly. And then as she walks away, it does that like ah like yes. back up, you know, whatever. So then when they're swimming and he sees her swimming, he doesn't try to attack her. He doesn't try to do anything to right. her. It's this beautiful scene of them like mirroring one another, of him mirroring her and how she's swimming. And then he's like so enamored and is like, "What is that beautiful thing?" Like, yeah. And Julie she's Adams, just I think, as much I think, of a creature to him as he is to her. Yeah, and Julie Adams, I think, referred to the scene as a love scene in general. It so is, it's very it really intimate is, and almost romantic. 
it is very romantic and then he swims down and like is in the seaweed just watching her and then you know she starts doing those flips in the water and he's just like oh baby you know like <laughs> wow you know, this is just to bring it back to Guillermo del Toro uh I sent you this interview I, don't I, know if you I watched that I watched so that. I love I love that he assumed and maybe rightfully so as a kid watching this movie for the first time he thought like oh great they're gonna fall in love with each other yeah. And uh, part of his reason for making Shape of Water is because that decidedly did not happen. And he's like, well, I'm going to make the movie where the Gill Man does get the girl. Well, that's um, the thing is the Gill Man never got the chance, you know, to shoot his shot. So it so it goes, you know, like okay, he, yeah, yeah. he he so when he's swimming around, he sees her and he goes up and like that whole thing where he's going to touch her and stuff. He doesn't grab at her. I think he's just trying to be like, hi, you know, yeah. like, Hello. <laughs> and and she gets all freaked out and, you know, then they come get her. And so then she gets up on the boat and he gets caught in that net, probably, you know, trying to swim back. So then it starts right. thrashing around and and he's, I'm sure, upset because he's like, well, what's she doing with those jerks? You know, they they stole that arm of one of my relatives, probably. Right. They, they're stealing plants out of my place. Yeah. You know, they're just being real jerks. And he's probably thinking, you know what? I need to to get her out of there because she's she's too good for these guys. Like, uh, and he's not wrong. He's not he's wrong. He's not wrong. So then he's like swimming with her, and then when they when they go back down in after they've noticed on the net like that that claw is in there, and they're like, "That's no catfish," or you know, like whatever. And right. they're, that's not a tree branch. I don't know what tree would leave behind this kind of thing. And so then they go back in. And they got the, uh, Mark has the harpoon gun, and they literally just are shooting at him for swimming. Like, he That's hasn't true. attacked them or approached them at all. Like, he really, he in the water at least, like, he hasn't tried to go after them, and they shoot him. So now it's like, oh, okay, well, you guys are violent and dangerous, so I need to treat you as if you're violent and dangerous. Right. And then they start poisoning all of the water. Yeah. To try and, you know, Ruining knock his out. home. They're doing all this terrible stuff. And in that part where they're poisoning the water, there's this, there's a shot where the gill man kind of like looks up at the water from the water and Kay is sitting there smoking. And in my mind, I was like, he's thinking like, oh man, she's really unhappy. They're driving her to smoke and that's yeah. not yeah. good for her <laughs> yeah. health. And, yeah, he's concerned you know, like, for her well-being. Yeah, like I, I, if you look at it through that lens of him like just being in love with her and the them, like him not trying to hurt anybody. Because even in the scene where he actually at one point picks her up, she fell over as he was like trying to approach her and she like is screaming and he's not like doing an attacking thing to me it looks like he's like hold on hold on wait wait let wait. me help you up and let she me help falls you. over and he's like oh let me pick you up and help you <laughs> and she's still screaming and flailing around like i genuinely feel like the gill man was just really like in love with this woman and thought that she was in harm's so way. So it is it is a King Kong scenario. It is yeah. that's what you're saying. It's like the, the, yeah. the, the monster loves the girl and nobody understands. And it's not his fault. He looks the way he looks and she's no. not attracted to that. You know, like she's already taken, to be fair. You know, she yes, wants to marry true. David. He should have he respected those that. boundaries. That's right. He doesn't know that, you know, and looking at what these guys are doing, he's like, these people are terrible. Why would such a treasure be with such turds? That's so, it. That's it. <laughs> that's how I look at it and how I can, like, I don't know, just appreciate it in a way where it's not, like, um, such a terrible, like, <laughs> creature. But he's he's a really nice guy and he's just misunderstood and his whole problem is he's a two that likes tens you that's know? it that's there are plenty it. of people that can relate people can relate to that and i think that's what guillermo del toro was saying he was like you know mm -hmm. we know he's like there are people in life all of us feel like outsiders so you watch a movie like this and you see the outsider trying to understand beauty or wanting to be a part of it and people just shunning him and kicking him away and I think that you that interpretation now that you go through it I think it's spot on I can agree with you and I know at the yeah. end 
uh, Sarah, my wife was watching it with me and she was like, I just feel bad for him. Like they're just shooting yeah. at him. Like what's going they're on? They're just shooting at him. They're messing with his house. Like they're just messing with all of his stuff. And, and as they're going into the black lagoon, they talk about how like these lands are untouched and the plants and the animals are all living the way that they did in prehistoric times because man hasn't ruined this yet. And here come these men ruining it. Yeah. That's what men do. Like they just don't, you know, they don't they, understand. They blow things up and they hate everything different. There's just this so. sense of entitlement to, to things and, and places. If another like human is not occupying those things or places. We have to divide and conquer. Yeah. And it's, it's like weird because, well, another thing like Mark the whole time is just wanting to take him dead. You know, he doesn't want to take yes. this thing alive. And so, Jesus well, to be, let's, so let's, well, let's play, let's, let's be nice to the humans because Mark is the one who's like, I want to kill this thing. And yes. David is the one who's like, no, 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 no. And even at the end, we're here he's for like, fossils. No, let it, yeah. Let it, yeah. He, he's like, let it go. We like, don't hurt it. Let it escape. We don't have to kill it. Um, I think, so yeah, David is great, and the fact that, like, the the creature attacks him is entirely due to his association with Mark. I think he that's got to be it. Is swimming around with him. He looks the same as him. You know, he's got the scuba stuff on, the shorts, whatever. Like, if you're looking at, like, oh, that's a fish, those are two of the same fish, you right. know? So right. he's looking at it like, oh, these are bad guys. So I need to, they've been violent to me. So I need to approach them with violence because they're not going to be nice to me. They've already shot me. Well, that's the thing. It's like they see him and then they like have a, the harpoon gun and shoot him almost yeah. immediately. So he's just Can like, I tell all right, you that's one how of it's going to be. favorite lines from this movie? Please. Okay. It's, how is he? He's dead. <laughs> When the when the one doctor after he gets wounded and you see him and he's just in the bed covered with face bandages. Yes. And when, oh, I love, when Mark a, and David get into that fight, they're literally punching each other into the wounded guy. I think that's amazing. It, it's such a funny moment. But what's funnier is when the the gill man is coming into the room and the guy with the bandages is just like, just his not eyes. again. Like he just <laughs> yeah. oh, and he can't scream or talk. So it, And all you see are his eyes all big. <sighs> yeah, he's just very, I was just like, oh, this, this guy can't catch a break. I think no. my... My, like my favorite line, I love the the Black Lagoon, a paradise. And I was like, this guy has not seen the marketing for this movie. He does not realize how silly that sounds. Um, no, I also yeah. love the uh, at the very beginning when they're they're they find the hand, and the guy says, "We'll take one more picture, then we'll dig it out." And I'm like, "Why do you need to take one more picture? Why would you say that at all? Like, what's there the pic- extra picture things- for it?" With the, um, you know, I'm no scientist or archaeologist or anything, <laughs> but I'd be willing to Not like bet. these guys. Yeah. I would be willing to bet that they did that wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> he just took, um, what was it, a big old pickaxe and like, crank. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like yanking it and trying to get it out of the no, earth. So like, they oh, would we'll preserve have that like thing. all of that blocked off and they'd be taking tiny little chisels and trying to break away the rock from the bone to see how far into it it goes. They wouldn't just pull it out and be like, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing, uh, to be fair, also the thing is seems very sturdy. They were able to get it out of there, no problem, no damage yeah. whatsoever. So maybe they yeah, just you knew know. they they didn't have to be gentle or try to preserve it or anything. They're the it's experts. I'm not gonna true. I'm not gonna argue with them. I think they they clearly they, they, knew. Yeah, they did get the degrees from the um what was it the University of Biologica Maritime. Yeah, yeah, the- <laughs> that sounds legit. <laughs> So yeah. let's do we want to talk about you you brought up Millicent Patrick in the beginning. Oh yeah, let's and, let's get into that. And let's do this. So I, I looked into it because you asked me to, and mm-hmm. I always do the things you asked me to because I, I want to be cool or I want to look cool in your you eyes. You want to be that so, cool guy. <laughs> so I looked this up. And the whole thing, I mean, you you spelled it out, but it is it's funny now that you mentioned the parallels of like, oh yeah, this guy's been stealing your research case or not stealing your research, but taking credit for mm-hmm. the research you've done and that's essentially what happened here where millicent patrick was brought on to design the creature and 
I think Bud Westmore, who was the uni- he was the the makeup guy for Universal. He yeah. was a name guy, and like you said, yeah. there was a whole industry around his family. And they, the Westmore they- family are just all phenomenal artists. Like, there's yes. no getting around that. But this whole Bud Westmore thing has really got me salty. <laughs> it is. Well, I can't blame you. And what happened was Bud Westmore allegedly, or I guess reportedly, was not great at monster makeup like he was good no, at normal which is, makeup yeah which is why they had other people working on this stuff and he very well may have like made a adjustment or a design choice and something here and there but like the creature was really millicent it was that's not it his. and and what i think what happened was if i could make some assumptions here mm-hmm. i think Millicent comes in, makes this amazing creature design that everyone's like, oh, this, wow, you, like, this is incredible. And Bud's feeling a little dejected because no one likes his monsters and there are, he's supposed to be the expert and he's the dude and he's feeling a little uh, emasculated. He's feeling a little bit like this woman can't just come in here and, and show me up. I'm the universal expert. So what happened was then universal did the whole marketing thing. I think you talked about this, like, just like Mm -hmm. they were going to send her out to do like the press yeah, the junkets. Yeah, the beauty and... who created the beast is exactly. what they were calling and, that tour. And that made him really mad. He's oh, like, she didn't create title. it. I, I created it. She just, uh, she drew what I wanted her to draw. I described it to her. He like made up all this stuff. So then Universal mm-hmm. was like, okay, well, how about the, the, the beauty who lives with the beast? Like she was just yeah. going to go around with the masks and like, we'll do that. And even that, Bud could not he's like no 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 I don't like that so he basically made them like remove her from all that press stuff and then he removed her credit from the movie and then fired her yep and then she was blackballed in Hollywood for almost the rest of her career yeah and I I looked up her like there's some sketchy stuff in her own life like there's something did you hear about this this there's this affair that like she was having an affair with uh, who ended up being her first husband, this guy, Paul Fitzpatrick. And this mm-hmm. is why she was at Disney and Fitzpatrick was married and Fitzpatrick's wife killed herself when she oh, learned God. about the affair, not only killed herself, but killed her unborn child in the oh, process. Geez. And then here's what makes me be like, mm, you know, Millicent Patrick, sure. As far as makeup goes. And as far as this scenario, she was totally wrong, but this gives me really icky vibes. Apparently, after that happened, after the suicide happened, uh, Paul Fitzpatrick was like, well, do you want to get married? And Millicent was like, absolutely. And it's like, uh, it feels really weird to me. It does. <laughs> but at the same time, the other side of that is who knows what this man was telling Millicent. That's very true. You that know, is very who knows true. You if know. he was like, oh, we're separated. She's crazy. No, 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 no. I'm leaving her. You know, like. So that to be devil's advocate on that, like we don't know the intricacies of that relationship, but I think I would have a hard time marrying somebody whose wife just committed suicide with their unborn child. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, and to be fair, mental health obviously was not looked upon with as much nuance no. as the scientists and archeologists show the black, uh, the creature from the black lagoon in this film. Um, yeah. Th- but like, I think back then, too, it was like, oh, she killed herself. Clearly, she was wrong, and she was well, evil and, and also, crazy. Well, and also, Sean, if you think about it, in a way, them getting married legitimized whatever their affair was. So it uh, yeah. almost kind of got rid of the immorality of that, in a way. Because it's like, well, you know, it, it was true love, and they did get married, so... right. No, that's true. That's a good point. So I, so this is this is to say, like Millicent. It's not to say like she was perfect by any means, but in no. this case, like for sure, it, it's this dude totally screwed her over. And like well, she, and also, like you, like, did you look at any of the other creature from the Black Lagoon? Like, two oh and my three? god, did I ever? So there was. Did the you first see se- how bad those are? Yeah, the first sequel. So I watched the trailer. It's called uh, Revenge of the Creature, right? And uh, I think. Revenge of he the has creature. much bigger lips in that one. Yeah, and I, I think this is also 
Clint Eastwood's one of his first appearances. Ooh. He's a he's a lab technician Jennings, and he's not even credited. Ooh. But this was one of his first appearances. But yeah, That's I was amazing. watching that. I didn't know that. Yeah, the, it doesn't look as bad in that one. But then the next one, it's not even oh. the same design. It's not even yeah. like the same creature. It's, it's like, like it, okay, you know what that one reminds me of a little bit. The have you seen all these? From, have you seen them? No, no, no. I've just the I've seen the images of them, okay. and I've seen like clips of them or whatever, but. Um, the third creature suit reminds me of the Goombas from Super <laughs> Mario Brothers. Yes. <laughs> and he even has like the small head and the oversized yes! like, coat. I, I, <laughs> that's spot on. Yeah. I, it, it's real, like, it's real bad. They banked off the yeah. success of like, oh, this creature design is amazing. They screwed Millicent mm-hmm. over. And then like, basically they screwed like I guess I don't know if they felt like oh we have to design our own better creature just to get away from all this drama, but they yeah. just made it look worse and worse and worse with each. Sequel. Yeah, and and what was really what I really loved about this suit in particular is like what you had said about the underwater stuff. You know, like yeah. the movement that they got in the gills and just the way that this suit was designed was like. It was done so well for the movement because it like, I don't know, like if you notice, like with his pattern, he's got like kind of these layers, like plates of scales. Yeah. And with that breakup, it, it gives the suit so much better movement where it doesn't look stiff and it doesn't buckle in ways that makes it look like a guy's wearing a suit. And because he didn't have tanks on him, he was literally glued into that thing. Like they'd put a body stocking on and then they, it took about three hours to get him in and out of the suit, but they would glue him from head to toe in this suit with the body stocking. So it moved really well with all of his movements. And then those moments where he's breathing and the gills are moving and expanding for the time, that was so amazing. Like, Even today, there's stuff that comes out that doesn't look that good. Oh, I know. Well, it it is. It's so incredible. And I like it's effective, too. Like the monster, like I said, when he's walking and he's Frankenstein out on land, it's kind of like that's why it's like when I watch the trailers for these sequels, he spends so much time on the land. And I'm like, "Mm, that was a bad idea. Put him in the water. Put him in the water. That's what he's there for. And like the whole thing with the. you mentioned the goggles, like Bud mm-hmm. was talking about, like, oh, goggles, I'll put goggles in the suit. And the the guy, the actor who's swimming underwater is like, no, don't do that. That actually makes no, it No, because worse. one of the things that happens when you're wearing goggles, like anybody who like scuba dives and stuff, like when you get certified, one of the things you have to do is like flood your goggles and then be able to blow air in your goggles to get yeah. the water out. So he wouldn't have been able to do that and his goggles would have just been completely flooded all the time. So it's like, if that's the case, I'm just not going to wear goggles. Right. Yeah. So I, all this stuff, like the design is, it's impeccable and it's amazing and it works really well. It's effectively creepy and him swimming around and grabbing people. It and looks the hand so coming out good the underwater. Like it, it really, really does. It does. And I, and, and it, it, the, the way that they have him like diving in and out of the plants and stuff and hiding in the plants and kind of like re- retreating into the plants. It, it's just, it works so well. It is. It's actually like, it is. I think it even works today, even as like, Oh, it's an old, black and white kind of hokey movie it works Mm -hmm. really well like that stuff feels like it kind of gives you goosebumps in a way it's sort of oh yeah just the the, the fact that they don't reveal him completely at first you know and totally i love that yeah you just see the hand you see his foot you maybe see the top of his head or something but you don't see the whole thing and then when you do get to see the whole thing of him it's like oh cool and then yes you know and then he's swimming around and they really show off the suit, which I loved. And it wasn't like there was a lot of stuff where it's like, oh, they had to hide that or, oh, well, this doesn't look good today. Maybe it looked good then. But everything still, I think today it holds up so well. I think so too. And I, that's, again, to talk about Jaws so clearly, uh, this movie so clearly influenced like the idea yeah. of like you hide the monster, keep it in the shadows, and then you reveal it in all its glory. Um, mm-hmm. This movie doesn't wait as long as Jaws does, but this movie's also like a uh, half the running length, or not half the running length, but it's a fraction it's, of the it's running like, length. It's like it's not even eighty-eight minutes. 
No, <laughs> it's a yeah, short it's movie. Yeah, it's short. But it's uh, what I want. What I would love is for somebody to take all of the cuts of when he's swimming around, and it seems like it's like dangerous music, like that Jaws music. Mm-hmm. If they played some really flowery romantic stuff. <laughs> Because it would completely change the tone and you would everyone would see it through the lens that I see it that through where it. he's not bad and he's in love. You and Guillermo del Toro, I think, should team up for a massive uh, film project where it, and it's really not that massive. You just take footage. Where we from write the, movie. the wrongs of all of the creatures. Can we, is been... there anybody out there who can uh, who can who can get in touch with Mr. Del Toro and, and let's make this a reality? We don't sure. need him. We really don't need him. It's literally we could just get some footage and add some new music to it. But I'm just well, looking for an excuse is, to hang out with him. Is I feel like honestly, like in that clip that you sent me, you know, he says it, but I do think that um, the shape of water. He did right the wrong of the people not empathizing with the creature. Yeah. So in the shape of water, you really do empathize with that creature. And you do see that that lady loves him. And like the whole time I was watching that movie, I was like, oh, well, you know, there's kind of like that weird thing, like of it being like, well, he's a fish person and she's a human. But then with her, like not actually being a human. Oh, okay. Then that makes a lot more sense. You know, then it's not. As, then it's very, very sweet and a lot more endearing and maybe the weird, like, bestiality connotations that you had thought of before. It's like, oh, well, it's not actually like that, you know? Right, right. But in this sense, it would, you know, she is 100% a human lady and that is 100% a fish person. So, <laughs> <laughs> But, and it's 100% awesome. Yeah, but, it's uh, so good. What, what else, is there anything else we want to touch on that you, that we haven't already? Let me see. What else did I have written down? I had just some fun stuff just about um, uh, about how they were. Oh, I have a fun fact. I have a fun fact. Oh, yeah. Fact. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. This is So Ingmar Bergman, one of my favorite filmmakers. This is the guy okay. who did Seventh Seal and Persona uh-huh. and Wild Strawberries. One of the greatest filmmakers of all time. Apparently, he watched this movie every year on his birthday. What a great tradition. Which is gives me so much joy. I really that was on IMDB trivia. I hope that's true. That I makes hope that's me true so too. Happy. That's wonderful. Yes. So that's my everybody that's my little should watch tidbit. this movie on their birthday. I think so too. Really, it's a it's suitable for any day of the year, but definitely, <laughs> you know, a celebratory thing is is a good reason to pull it out. It's one of those things that I I, I pray that nobody j- tries to reboot it or remake it. Because oh, you it, know they will. I know they've been ta- they were talking about it, and then they wanted. Remember the the not, Tom but the Cruise. The thing is, is after the Shape of Water came out, I feel like I'm glad that that came out because it was enough of this to give people that without having to take away from Creature from the Black Lagoon and remaking it in a way where fans who love the original, which I guess now are, you know, more far and few between because this movie's over 65 years old now. So, like... (laughs) But you have people like you to keep the spirit alive. And I think uh, you can't do much better than... uh, I mean, The Shape of Water made tons of money. It won Best Picture, Best Direct... Like, I mean, like, that's about... As far as a success story goes, if you remake this movie you're not gonna get on that level so just leave it no let's you, let yeah, it just happen. leave it because like one of the things one of the movies that was remade that initially i was very upset about being remade was evil dead but right i understand why that was remade because evil dead was accidentally perfect and accidentally <laughs> created like a whole lane for just outlandish horror yes. where it's ridiculous and silly and scary and they did not intend for that to be the case like they wanted it to be scary but the technology wasn't there the budget wasn't there just that movie ended up being funny and so they leaned into that so i could understand why okay well this is how we originally wanted it to be so let's try and do that this movie was in my opinion i don't understand how you could make it any better I don't like I don't I mean maybe like if we cared more about the individual characters but Yeah, but movie, do we really need to at the end no, of the day? No, you don't need to. I feel like you just need to really care about the creature. 
And, and so, yeah, if anybody remade this, I'd be very upset because there's no reason to <laughs> remake this. Like, it didn't fall short of what it was trying to do when it came out. In fact, it 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 was inspiration for so much. So it would be like, you know, I don't, I, I guess this is maybe a silly thing to say, but it for me, it would be almost like, well, you know, the Bible was great, but let's rewrite it. <laughs> they people do, would I mean, be pissed about it the and there are a bunch of different versions of it where it's like no 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 no, but that's not the real one you know right. like so there's no reason to to remake this for what it is like Guillermo del Toro's was a new idea on that and a new angle on it where that makes sense to do it like that. So in I, I the pray... beginning God created the Gill man and he he <laughs> saw that it was good. He saw that it, it was perfect. He saw that it was perfect. The end. No remakes. That's, that's no remakes. Uh, yeah. Well, and you know, I'm. I wonder because of how short it is. If there are any deleted scenes or anything that ended up on the cutting yeah, room floor, I don't because know. it's yeah, it's not very long. I, I, no, I, I, don't, I forget I don't think about it, that. And every I time, I, it's like an hour and twenty max. Yeah, and I don't think it – this is a time where movies like this were that length, and it was fine. Yeah. Like, you didn't need it to be longer, and they knew no, they could get, like, people into the theater, make some money. No, there wasn't a rule about it needing to be money. 88 minutes Yeah, so to I, be feature length. I think it's I think it's perfectly fine. I agree. It's like a movie that you could remake, but between movies like Jaws and The Shape of Water, we have – the spirit of this film lives on, and we we don't need to. We've perfected – the the things this movie gave to cinema, we've perfected them with other movies. And it's like, mm-hmm. there's no reason to go back to this because it's just going to be a situation where you're like, oh, yeah, I've seen that already. Well, and it would also be a situation where I feel like you're discrediting the original at that point. Yeah. You so know, it's I, like, well, what's the point of remaking that? It was fine. I don't like, like remakes don't in general. Like, in general, some there are some good remakes, but like... I really comes... enjoyed the Jumanji reboot. <laughs> yes. There, there is some Honestly. good... There's some good things out there, but in this case, yeah. I think, leave it. Leave it alone. Yeah. There's no reason to. And no. I'm, I'm just... I'm, I'm really appreciative of the fact that, like, I get to to be your Sherpa through these classics. I you know? I am so happy that you are as well. I'm so happy to get to watch these movies that I have such an educated and brilliant archaeologist who knows how to remove the <laughs> hand from the soil and gift it to me <laughs> and enlighten me in my life. But uh, I, I, I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. I don't know if it's one of my favorite movies, but I, I think it's, it's definitely well worth a watch it's clear that its influence is wide-ranging and yes. and merited and uh and the I thing don't... is is this i wouldn't say this is my favorite movie of all time uh, and it's hard for me to even pick my number one favorite but this is definitely up there and for me it has you know my own personal reasons just because you know i ended up working i'm working in the industry that makes stuff like this so this yeah. is a huge inspiration for me and it was just such a fun movie to watch. And you know how I had said I I really wasn't good at watching like current monster movies or horror movies because they scared me too much. And watching these older classics really helped me kind of like when you're on um when you're afraid of roller coasters, you go on like the baby the roller baby coasters one, yep. and you build your way up. <laughs> like this these movies are kind of like that because they're so old that some of the gags are cheesier and less realistic and less believable. So you don't, you're not as scared, but there still are those moments of suspense. So what do you think? Final ratings. Uh, do we want to do Gilman? Do we want to do, uh, mm. how many Gilman would you give creature from the black how, lagoon? How many people would you murder? <laughs> <laughs> how many, how many people's would you, would you hug their heads to death, uh, for, for creature of the black lagoon? All of them. All of them. <laughs> no, I, I, I would give it a five. Okay. Um, if that's the scale we're doing. And I've all, I'm, I'm always overly generous, I think, because I'll find something in any movie that I'm like, no, well, that was amazing. The story might have been terrible, but the costumes, <laughs> did you see the lighting and the set design? Like, I get really excited about that stuff. And this movie holds such a special place in my heart that I could – I. I I could not give it anything less than a five. I understand that. I'm don't hate me. I'm going to give it a three 
But what? Shock. I, know, I think that's I, the lowest a, you've rated anything that we've I, watched that's together. Not, now I'm offended. That is not true. Yes, it is. That is, yes, it is. That is not true. Not true. How dare you? What did you What did you rate Westworld? Westworld was lower than this. I think. Okay. <laughs> I don't think Westworld I, was because I don't think I don't think you've given anything lower than a four. <laughs> no, I think I, I think Clue I maybe gave three and a half or a three. So Clue so, gets more than this? Are you kidding? This, <laughs> <laughs> this is. But yeah, seven years. I'm year Seven years got offended. three and a half. Uh, uh, Some like it hot got five. So. Yeah, oh, I mean, maybe, so but good. like, that's not to say I didn't like it. I liked it. I've I've just sat here and I've told. I you understand that I... your reasoning because it really is not the most fast paced movie. I um, thought you were going to say I understand your reasoning, but you're also completely wrong. Well, yeah, I was getting to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I get that. I get that perspective. I get that I'll, rating. I'll say like, I, I feel w- like I you wish... just told me that my kid competed poorly. I know, and that's why I I. I, I... <laughs> Say or that you just love. told me my dog was ugly. I, I say it with love, but Carly you got an ugly dog. No, your dog <laughs> is actually adorable. Your dog is the best. I he is no, I think he I loves think this it's, movie and he's offended. He's. I think this is this is a fine movie. I think the the creature design, the underwater stuff, and the creepiness of it is great. I think uh, what I what I want from it is maybe more stuff with the with people i care about but i don't know there lots of these monster movies don't have that in general so i don't know if that's really right. a fault honestly oh, and it's I just, just a personal thing i wanted to ask you your opinion of captain lucas because he to me was just like such a fun character and he was like popeye with his little hat and his cigar And I don't know, like he was this fun little comedic relief for the story that I feel like there's so much story to that captain, but we never really get to know. That's what I want. I wanted more to learn more about these people, because what happens is once they start studying the creature, they're all basically like the creature, the creature. And it's like, Mm -hmm. wait, what about you people? What do you do you care? Like you one of you wants to kill him. The other wants to study him. But like like you said, Captain Lucas is a great example. It's like, who's this guy? What does he care about? Like, what does he yeah, want out of what's life? What's he all about? Yes, exactly. What so gets like, his goat? That's it. That's what I wanted. I wanted a little <laughs> bit more of that. But no, it's a good movie. Everyone should watch it. Your your voice went up at the end. Right? It's a good movie. It's a good movie. I'm trying to I'm like. I feel like I'm I'm being attacked. I feel like your dog doesn't like me, and I just want your dog. Well, to you love just me. told him he's ugly, so no, I, I don't didn't. know what you never. expect. I would never do that. So. I think anybody who has not watched this movie should watch it if you are into just cinema history and yes. understanding and horror like, movies oh, and monster movies and, and not and, even just that like i mean just the there was a lot of really cool stuff about the way it was shot so like if you're interested in you know cool underwater shots or you know just effect stuff like that like i think it's it's been an inspiration for a lot and it would be a shame to not see that and not have the appreciation for it and see all of these other things that you know and love and be like oh man they might have got that from this or oh they that's just yeah. like this oh yeah there's so much yeah. stuff for they for sure did well i am now i have been officially schooled i am ready mm-hmm. to face the world with this new knowledge Good fish and i pun. think i I think so. I, yeah, that was absolutely 100% <laughs> intentional. And uh, I, I thank you, Carly, for once again coming back and introducing me to this beautiful film. I don't know what we're going to do absolutely. next time. I feel like you've been introducing me to things, and now I've got to come, come up with one for you. So All right. We'll, we'll, do, we'll that. do it. We'll do that. But you're also – I'm enjoying this whole year schooling me in the classics that I haven't seen. So maybe – Anytime, yeah. man. Anytime. We've got some options. We've got some options to keep this going. But, Carly, if people want to find you and see all the cool makeup work you're doing, is there a place out there on the interwebs where they can do that? Absolutely. You can find me on Instagram at Carly Does Makeup, and that's C-A-R-L-E-Y Does Makeup. The correct way to spell Carly. Yes. Let's be clear. Yes. And the you can correct. find me – you can find me on Twitter at EA Shondorman. You can find me on Letterbox, which is super nifty. Do you know Letterbox, Carly? It's where you no, can I rate don't. movies, you can review them. They didn't pay me to say any of this, but they should. But you can find me there. I'm just Shondorman. And I, I want to thank all our listeners for checking us out, for sticking with us to the end of the episode. We'll 
see you at the movies. Thank you.